This episode, I visit Salvatore Rosa National Park. The unusual name was given by Major Mitchell, the famous explorer and Surveyor General of New South Wales on his 1846 trip in search of a route from Sydney to Port Essington, now known as Darwin. Mitchell set up his base camp at the spring-fed oasis he discovered, which is now known as Major Mitchell Springs. He wrote in his diary, it was a discovery worthy of the toils of a pilgrimage. He named the area after the Neapolitan 17th century artist Salvatore Rosa, who portrayed the same rugged mountain terrain in his paintings that Mitchell had seen in the landscape. Mitchell had many places, flora and fauna named after him, including the well-known cockatoo. Leaving Springshaw early next morning, I travelled the 114 kilometres along the Dawson Development Road to the Salvatore Rosa turn-off. The 50k trip along the Salvatore Rosa Road into the park reveals some stunning views of the soaring sandstone cliffs on the later stages of the road. The odd bastard on the side of the road and plenty of eagles soaring. Arriving at the very pleasant campsite, I was happy to see I had the whole park to myself, except for the abundant wildlife, including a wallaby and her joey. Later that afternoon, another two couples arrived. One were in a very well set up Toyota Land Cruiser camper, and the others were towing a small caravan. They were both very friendly and keen on exploring the park. Early next morning, I had breakfast with the wallabies and kookaburras before I set off on the four-wheel drive track, starting with crossing the Nagoya Creek. The water levels can rise rapidly if rain has occurred further up in the catchment, and the bottom is soft silt. But today, it was low and an easy crossing. The four-wheel drive track is all sand, and in a few places, it is deep and soft. It has a firm base, so it's not a problem. The first stop is Spyglass Hill, named for the hole at the top right through the hill. It's a short walk from the parking bay and the track takes you past the rock formation known as the Great Wall of China. It is not easy to get a clear view of Spyglass Hill from the track. Better views of the hill can be got further down the four-wheel drive track and the lookout on the next hill. Well, it's an absolutely beautiful morning here at the uh, Salvatore Rosa section of Carnival National Park. Um, got up early and uh, had breakfast with the wallabies and the uh, mountain seagulls, the currawongs. So uh, I'm on uh, the four wheel drive self tour. So my first stop is uh, Spyglass Hill. And on the way here, this uh, rock formation is known as the uh, Great Wall of China.
The next stop on the track is the day use area at the creek crossing. There had been fuel reduction fire burns carried out recently, so the nearby bush was still burnt and black. The creek itself was still nice with crystal clear water and footprints of mostly roos or wallabies that come to drink at the creek. There's a shelter shed and it would be nice for a picnic, although there are no other facilities. Stop 3 along the four wheel dive track is the lookout, which is only a short, steep walk from the car park to the summit. Spectacular views of Spyglass Peak and the park await at the top. I've climbed up this hill with um, I don't know, some horticultural name beginning with H, so I'm just going to call it Horticulture Hill. It's a fantastic lookout. You look out right across the, uh, the National Park. It's a steep climb, but uh, well worth it. So I'll just turn the camera around and uh, give you a bit of a, a glimpse of the view. I'm not sure how well it's going to come out in this fisheye lens, but we'll see what we get. Just need to make sure I don't fall off the bloody rock. This is Belinda Spring, where the water just flows out from underneath the rocks and uh, the entire valley is just covered in uh, in ferns. I thought I read that uh, it's supposed to be a million litres a day flows out of the springs. It uh, doesn't actually look like it's flowing quite that quick at the moment. And they've had a burn off obviously recently so the bush is uh, not looking its, uh, its best. Although I suppose that's its uh, natural state. Still a very pretty place. The last stop on the four wheel drive track is Mitchell Springs, named after the explorer Major Mitchell, who went through here in 1846. The spring flows out over peat bogs before once again disappearing underground and then returning to the surface at Belinda Springs on the previous stop. Spread all through the park are these sandstone rock outcrops created from sand and silt laid down in a basin from large river system hundreds of millions of years ago. Erosion has formed many caves and holes in the rock such as these near the southern end of the four wheel drive track. Just before sunset, a convoy of bum-heavy Prados dragging off-road apartments arrived. You could tell they were off-road models because they had stickers of four-wheel drive tyre tracks on them. Three circuits of the five-acre empty campground, except for me, and you can guess where they decided to camp. With military precision, alike to the legions of Rome, they set up camp. A protective wagon circle was formed, vans levelled, annexes rolled out, tables and chairs set up in a roaring fire lit before the cheese platter and dip was produced. You could tell from the setup these vehicles were never going to be uncoupled to explore the park and none of them would see anything other than the long drop toilet. That night 
The campground was lit up like a North Sea oil rig, and all the wildlife had vanished. As I lay in my swag, listening to the lullaby melody of Honda generators, reverse cycle air conditioning, and plasma screens playing my kitchen rules through premium sound systems, I pondered what inspires someone to drag ridiculously expensive rigs thousands of kilometres over rough tracks to a destination they are not interested in seeing or learning about. I mean, even though it's not my thing, I get the idea of travelling in a van, staying in van parks, meeting new people, enjoying life on the road. If all these people wanted was 10 square metres of dirt and a drop toilet for the night, why not just stay in a van park? My theory is they simply want to tick the been there, done that box. In the next episode, I visit Carnarvon Gorge and Lake Nugga National Parks on my sandstone belt trip. Mm -hmm.